and landmark verdicts of the Supreme Court, including judgments on the Ayodhya land dispute and the right to privacy. He has been a part of benches that delivered path-breaking judgments on decriminalizing same-sex relations, the Shabrimala worship case and paved the way for the permanent commission for women officers in the armed forces. Recently, a bench headed by him expanded the scope of the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act to include unmarried women. The new Chief Justice comes from a storied family and has big shoes to fill. His father, Yashwant Vishnu Chandrachur, holds the distinction of being the longest serving Chief Justice of India. Progressive reforms has been the signature of Justice Chandrachur as a judge of the Supreme Court. And as the Chief Justice, can he chart a similar path for the judiciary as he navigates the social, cultural and political dynamics of India? Before I bring in top jurists of India, here's a look at the legal journey of the 50th Chief Justice of India. Justice Dhananjay Yashwan Chandrachur was sworn in as the 50th Chief Justice of India on Wednesday. He succeeds Justice Yuyu Lalit, who demitted office on the 8th of November after a brief tenure of 74 days. Samen in Agriki Seva Karna, a very priority. Abab Agadek Terehi, Harisaham Sare, Hariki Sare in Agriki of Kilikar Karenge. Son of the 16th Chief Justice of India, Yashwant Vishnu Chandrachur, D.Y. Chandrachur was born on November 11, 1959. Justice Chandrachur pursued a BA with honours in economics from St. Stephen's College and did his LLB from the Campus Law Centre at Delhi University. He obtained an LLM degree and a doctorate in juridical sciences from the Harvard Law School. Justice Chandrachur practiced as an advocate in the Supreme Court and the High Courts of Gujarat, Calcutta, Allahabad, Madhya Pradesh, as well as Delhi. He was designated as a senior advocate by the Bombay High Court in 1998 and served as Additional Solicitor General of India from 1998 to the year 2000. He served as a judge of the Bombay High Court from March 29 in the year 2000 and the Chief Justice of the Allahabad High Court from October 13, 2013 until his appointment to the Supreme Court on May 13, 2016. Justice Chandrachur has been a part of several constitutional benches and landmark verdicts of the top court, including the Ayodhya land dispute, the right to privacy, the decriminalization of same-sex relations, the Shabrimala case, and even the expansion of the scope of abortion laws. He now helms the highest court of the land, facing the daunting challenge of reforming the judiciary and critical cases, including petitions against the government's flagship Agnipat scheme and the power tussle between the Delhi and Union governments. Joining me on the show, Satipal Jain, Additional Solicitor General, Agita Lutra, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, Ujwal Nikam, Senior Advocate of Bombay High Court, Tanvir Ahmad Mir, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court. Geeta Lutra, I'm going to begin with you, ma'am. Justice Chandrachur has been one of the most uh, prolific judges in the Supreme Court, being part of over 220 judgments. Which judgment or order, according to you, has been truly landmark? So there are many landmark judgments. Uh, I believe that uh, I like the LGBT judgment insofar as what he says is that uh, we cannot correct the wrongs of history, but we can at least give the right direction. Hmm. So um, in the sense that Justice Chandrachud has uh, tried to make giant leaps in human rights, in rights of minorities, in gender justice, I believe that um, uh, truly that judgment is, which is Navjot Johar's judgment, yes. is perhaps one of the most outstanding judgments. But I would be wrong if I actually pinpoint only one. I think the Sabri Mala, I, I think that his rationale in all his judgments 
whether it be Putaswami or in Sabrimala, hmm. are unique and the proportionality principle which is there in law but which he laid down so strongly in Putuswami uh, is extremely telling for the right to privacy. So I believe there are, it is his logic uh, and the beauty of the expression and the manner in which he puts it across okay. that I think each of his judgments are unique. Okay. Uh, Tanvir Ahmed Mir, the 50th Chief Justice is taking over at a time uh, when the government has criticized the collegium system of appointments of judges uh, as, you know, as lacking transparency. Uh, do you see executive and judiciary perhaps being on the collision course now onwards? Thank you, Maria, for that question. I firmly believe that the executive has always had a problem with the independence of judiciary as the third leg on which a robust democracy is to stand. That has been happening previously also. And let me assure you that these noises will be certainly made in future and during his tenure also. I think that the executive is a bit apprehensive about this great honorable chief justice in terms of the uh, the great jurist that he is. Hmm. And I should say that one of his hallmarks is recognition of individual liberty, balancing of rights between law enforcement agencies and individual rights. So uh, we have a lot of expectations from the new, uh, new Chief Justice, which includes, you know, filling up of vacancies in various high courts. But I think the most telling ones will be where the executive is in a tussle with people who they don't like or their political opponents. We have new kinds of challenges in, uh, in our society. For example, demolition of houses of innocent citizens or just for people who have been accused of some commission of criminal offenses. Now, these are great challenges before the highest court and the Honorable Chief Justice that whether the dispensations in power in various states or the center will be given a long rope in trampling upon the individual rights hmm. and valuable rights of living with dignity and honor of citizens of this country, irrespective of whatever spiritualities and religions they follow. Yes. Okay. Let now, me... we have seen Justice uh, Chandrachud yes. writing a legendary judgment hmm. in recognition of India individual uh, uh, liberty in journalist Ar Arnab Goswami's case. Hmm. So I expect as a lawyer that he will keep up this stride in whatever matters that will, uh, uh, you know, reach his, uh, reach his desk and his court. Yes. And he's there to se send a very strong signal in the society that the judiciary is there as protector of rights of the people and not as an institution which is going to buckle down before the might of the electoral vote being gained to a particular party. Okay, let me bring in, in that essence. Yes, let me bring in Satyapal Jain as well. Uh, dissent is a symbol of vibrant democracy. Voices in opposition cannot be muzzled by uh, persecuting those who take up unpopular causes. Justice Chandrachur wrote in his minority opinion. And there has been several such differing views uh, in, 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 in uh, several 220 judgments that he has overseen. Uh, one of the historic dissent was also on the Aadhaar policy as well. Uh, and, and as Gita Luthra and Tanvir Ahmed Mir were pointing out, he is someone who has upheld the individual rights, the right of minority. What do you think will be the big challenge going forward, Satyapal Jain? See, I totally agree with my earlier learned colleagues. He is one of the finest judges we have in the Indian judiciary. His command over the language, his uh, zeal to protect the fundamental rights of all sections of society, his zeal to make submissions, to uh, write judgments with logic. You may differ with the logic, you can differ with the judgment, but he has a logic in his own judgment which you need time to understand. 
Hmm. I think that he will prove to be one of the best chief justices of this country. So far as the challenges before him are concerned, I think there are two, three serious challenges that he will have to face. Number one, increasing the number of judges, meaning thereby decreasing the number of vacancies and decreasing the number of cases which are pending both in the Supreme Court as well as in the High Courts. Hmm. Now, as per my information, out of about 1,000 judges uh, in the different High Courts, uh, th there are about 300, 350 vacancies which are already there. Supreme Court has vacancies. I am not saying that simply by increasing the number of uh, judges in different High Courts and Supreme Court, the pendency of the cases will decrease. But certainly as the head of the institution, Parivar ke mukhya hmm. and the judicial sarkar ke mukhya, mukhya ke nate, he will have to take those steps. And I am very confident that he is competent enough, he has the capacity enough to take all these challenges and he will be able to come out of it. I am very confident that uh, my friends were citing something, some conflict with the executive and all that. I don't think any, any apprehension of that. Okay. Even in the judiciary, you hmm. are just referring to a minority judgment. Judges differ. One just says this thing, another says different thing. Hmm. It doesn't mean there is some, some collision or there is some, some uh, sort of conflict and all that. Right from 52 onwards, Purnu Swami's case, there have been number of constitution benches, full benches, even three judges benches, where judges have differed. So if the judges differ, then there is no challenge to the institution. Then how can you presume that Absolutely. if the executive differs, there is something which is unexpected. Yes. So, you know, he has also said, uh, Ujwal Nigam, that it is the responsibility of all decision makers, not just judges, to ensure that the law does not become an instrument of oppression, but remains an instrument of justice. And as the top justice of this country, as the chief justice who will be in office for two long years, uh, you know, uh, the lawyers on the panel have already explained the challenges, uh, a possible collision course with the executive. The big challenge, of course, is of the pendency of the cases as well. What do you think uh, is something that you will be expecting out of Justice Chandrachur? Uh, let me tell you very frankly, the moment Justice Chandrachud has assumed the charge of a CJA of our country, hmm. he has said one very important sentence. He would like to do the work instead of talking much. Hmm. That is a very important message which he has given to the society at large. Right Now, see, I am conducting the many serious cases in the state, but what I find that everybody talks about the conviction. But what's about the appeal against acquittal? There is a huge pendency, whichever the, uh, the, of the appeal against the acquittal in all high courts. But nobody is paying very serious attention. Even in the high court, nobody bothers about that appeal against acquittal because the appeal has been preferred by the state. What I expect to you, that Honorable Justice Chandrachur has to pay an attention whether a regular bench can be constituted to decide an appeal against acquittal. Because I have conducted one very serious case as a special public prosecutor in Maharashtra. That judge has acquitted. It's a case of a double murder. The trial judge acquitted all the accused. And we preferred an appeal. And High Court reversed the judgment. And they gave judgment after the 15 years. So what is the use of that judgment? Because the deterrence sentence, it is not only to the punish to the very criminal. But to give a strong message to the like-minded people, this is the very different purpose of the punishment. But that purpose is being frustrated because appeal of against acquittal are not being taken on priority basis. Hmm. So uh, I expect that Honorable Chief Justice uh, would pay much attention uh, to the state priority also, so far as the appeal against acquittal, number one. Hmm. Number two, about the collegium system, that also you raised that question also. Yes. Uh, I must concede here, Every system has certain advantages as well as disadvantages. It is said in English that every kitchen has a cockroaches. But in order to have a good food, we try to remove the cockroaches by using the strong insecticide. So no doubt, I must fairly concede that in collegium system also, there are certain drawbacks. Now we have to see how Honorable Justice, Chief Justice Chandrachud would like to improve that collegium system. Because... In judiciary, transparency is more important. And if there is no transparency, the common man's confidence will be shaken at large. And therefore, we have to see what our new CGI would like to make certain changes in the collegium system. What's about the judicial accountability bill? 
that is also pending with the government that's right so there are the many problems many and i i'm sure because honorable cti is a very dynamic person and he's a versatile person uh, he knows each and every all the problems of common man and i'm very confident that he will try to solve all this problem okay before i go back to the panelists let's listen in uh, to justice chandrachur uh, he spoke at the hindustan times leadership summit 2022 sick framework for the functioning of our courts what kind of challenges do we really face in today's times i think the first challenge that we face is the challenge of expectations and that's a huge challenge for the court almost every case comes into the lap every social issue every legal issue and i dare say a large number of political issues fall within the adjudicatory jurisdiction of the supreme court the reasons for that are numerous very often the government is the largest litigant in the court and the reason why the government is the largest litigant in the court is for the simple reason that we have over the last 70 years bred a culture of indecision a culture of indecision at the lowest levels of government so be it a case of a pension a case of compassionate appointment for a woman who has lost a spouse while in service who wants a job in a in a in a, in a government department there's always a tendency there's also a culture of distrust and that culture of distrust leads many of our top decision makers to be very careful about taking decisions having a bearing on very high stakes would there be a vigilance inquiry if the person were to be promoted or were to lay down office would there be possibly an allegation that you made a concession to a a corporate enterprise and which would be investigated into 10 years down the line so a variety of reasons in the indian context have led to a culture of distrust and therefore a culture of indecision on the part of public functionaries now all those cases are therefore deferred to the court we'd rather have the court decide than us taking a decision that's one of the reasons why the courts have a large backlog of cases within the uh, fold of cases that we decide so geeta luthra here is the chief justice speaking about the burden of expectations and that is perhaps forcing uh, the decision makers to delay decision and leading to that mistrust he is absolutely right you know today in the courts if you go to the courts you will see that the government is the biggest litigant in fact day after day petitions are thrown out saying you know there is no merit in it you filed it after 200 days you filed it after 500 days and this is because Gov- government officers to actually protect their backs and to be non decisive become file pushers and the ultimate aspect is it lies in the lap of the court hmm. now while i say that i also want to take a leaf out of what uh, tanveer said which is uh, the aspect that the the question of a clash be, possible clash between a strong executive and a strong judiciary hmm. now in actual fact they should go hand in hand and in the past most decisions by the courts are respected by government there are rare decisions where the state will amend the law will try and over see the law but as in when the the court actually lays down and quashes an act or an um, notification in most cases the government takes it okay. gracefully there okay. will be cases there will always be those cases okay a strong executive normally does not coexist with the strong judiciary i am hoping that the future will show 
a strong executive but a equally strong judiciary that's that's a point very well taken tanveer ahmed meer will you add to it that the need of the hour is that you have all the pillars uh, that hold this democracy strong legislature yes, executive yes, you know, judiciary and also actually, the media actually you know uh, when we look at our country and our constitution it is the people of india who are supreme yes. at the end of the day it's not a government who is in power or a dispensation in power which is the supreme and therefore any government in a state or a center has to realize that they are there to serve the interest of the country at large hmm. for every citizen and that should percolate down now in that you know political zest that we are in power now it should not be that you are seeking to railroad everybody and you are trying to conduct yourself that if you are not with me it's like if you if you don't like my way then the only way is the highway hmm. i get if that you hmm. see a couple of uh, a couple of years earlier hmm. at the time when honorable Ch Ch justice ts thakur was the chief justice hmm. and uh, a particular dispensation was in power during that time not even a single recommendation of appointment to the supreme court went through yes why because the government blocked everything now what we expect is that the legal community is always there to serve if there is a strong legal community you will see a strong chief justice you will see strong judges in the high courts you will see strong judges in the supreme court okay likewise people who get elected to the parliament hmm. they better realize that they are there to serve and they can't have unsatiable greed to grab power and to retain it at any cost okay so some, just... uh, some amount of clash is bound to happen okay but Let's we see. are there to protect the interests and that is what we expect and, and i'm sure if, if that the people are supreme justice including justice chandrachud and if they are kept hard towards at the achieving those center of all the decisions and that's where india should be headed satyapal jain i have just 30 min seconds for you please go ahead see i i totally agree with the uh, my learned colleague as well as mr kiran rajuju who said that it is the will of the people that should prevail in indian system both the legislature the executive as well as the judiciary they are supreme in their own fields ultimately it is the constitution which is supreme when we talk of will of the people i'll just give one example the national judicial appointment commission act was passed by both houses of the parliament unanimously congress bjp akali dal cpm all agreeing to that still the supreme court said with the ratio of 4 to 1 no 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 mm. it is against the basic structure of the constitution of india the whole executive accepted it mm. the, there was no challenge to that so but question will be what is the will of the people the act passed by the parliament as a whole or by the honorable judges but still because the power ultimately lies with the judiciary entire country accepted that and so far as the appointment part is concerned there are plus and negative points of both the systems the okay. government system also the uh, collegium system also okay. let us find out a rational way where and discrimination will, at will, any level will is there be discussion on the that rational way let's see thank you so much for joining me geeta lutra ujwal nigam tanveer ahmed meer and satyapal jain at the hindustan times leadership summit the chief justice of india also spoke about why judges speak in different voices especially during the course of hearing of any case listen in judges often come across to people as old fashioned octogenarians because of our black gowns and of course the imposing regalia when you combine that with a sonorous voice legal language which like the doctor's prescription you know the doctor's prescription only the chemist can understand so legal language which only the lawyers can understand it can be a heady combination for boredom utter boredom but to borrow the lyrics of that song from doris day and frank sinatra we are among the very young at heart so so i'll begin with that this morning i'm very often posed with questions and uh, you also read them in the media uh, ever so ever so often and those questions are why do 
different judges speak with different voices, particularly in the Supreme Court. Why can't these guys agree on one set line of approach? Why is it that in very crucial cases there are multiple voices speaking from within the same court? Uh, another criticism or question is that why do you have to deal with whether or not to grant bail to somebody who has stolen uh, luxury cars or maybe cycles or who is in possession of five kilograms of opium? Why should you be really opening yourself up to deciding these cases? Or sometimes you're asked, why is it when we look at the dais on the benches of our courts, whether it's the high courts or the Supreme Court, that you see more men than women? Of voters' turnout and how they're coming in large numbers to cast their votes. He said that the change of tradition is inevitable this time as he is sure that the people of Himachal will bring back BJP in power. Feedback, feedbacks, बहुत अच्छा आ रहा है और वो feedback इस तरह का आ रहा है कि तो उत्साह के साथ लोग वोट डाल रहे हैं और दूसरी बात जो important चीज है कि सबसे important चीज जो ये है कि शांतिपूर्ण ढंग से लोग मतदान कर रहे हैं। Union Minister Anurag Thakur along with his family cast their votes at a polling station in Samirpur for the Himachal Pradesh elections. Polling across all 68 assembly constituencies is underway amid tight security arrangements. Congress MP Anand Sharma cast his vote for Himachal Pradesh elections at Senek Rest House Longwood at Shimla polling station. Sharma had earlier withdrawn his name as the head of the Congress campaign committee. There is a mood for change. There are vast sections of the society which have suffered, especially the government employees, the youth who are despondent because of high youth unemployment, women, brave young people who serve in the Indian Defence Forces after the Agni Pad scheme. No, Congress will have a we will have a strong and stable majority. They won't succeed here. Sukesh Chandrasekhar has penned a fresh letter against the Aam Aadmi Party. Sukesh in his letter said that he is ready for a polygraph test if both Kejriwal and Satinder Jain give their consent for the same. He further added that he has even arranged the PR for the Delhi government's school story. As soon as Sukesh's letter came to light, BJP took a dig at Aap's Arvind Kejriwal. BJP spokesperson Shahzad Punawala called out Kejriwal and asked him to take a lie detector test in order to prove his innocence. Shahzad also accused Kejriwal, Satinder Jain and Kailash Gelot of using the extorted money for Punjab and Goa elections. Today, yet another letter from Sukesh has exposed the true face of the AKVC, Arvind Kejriwal, Vasuli Company and the Vasuli Bhaijan, Satinder Jain and Kailash Gelot. He must take the live lie detector test and prove to the world whether Sukesh is lying or whether AKVC and the Vasuli agents are lying. Was this money exchanged at Kailash Gelot's farmhouse? Is it true that crores of rupees that were earned through this medium were spent for Punjab and Goa elections? TNC Minister Akhil Giri is facing severe backlash for raising objectionable remarks on the President during a public rally in Nandigram. In a viral video, Giri was seen mocking the looks of President Draupadi Murmu. He said that I know that people should not be judged on the basis of looks. However, have you seen how our president looks? BJP's Amit Malviya slammed the TMC minister Akhil Giri over his remarks. He said Giri has stooped to new lows through this level of discourse. While attacking TMC, Malviya said the president hails from the tribal community and that Mamata Banerjee's party incites anti-tribal sentiment. Former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi's assassination convict Nalini Sriharan is set to reach Katpadi police station to sign parole. After being in jail for 31 years for a crime, Nalini, along with five other convicts, were freed by the Supreme Court yesterday. A 57-year-old dentist who was accused of sexual harassment by a woman was found dead on the railway track at Kundapura near Udupi railway station in Karnataka. The police have taken five persons, including an Indian Union Muslim League leader, 
into custody for allegedly threatening the dentist. Hello and welcome. The world is changing so fast that it's difficult to keep pace sometimes. And you can trust me. I'm Atika Faruqi. This is Now Showing, where we talk about and we talk to the people who are riding the wave of change. Today is a lot of stuff to watch and a lot of stuff to hear. So let's begin with the highlights. Uchai is a well-directed, skillfully performed family film focused on reinventing at any age. The brave women Meena Gupta, Sarika and the blockbuster director Suraj Barjati are in a beautiful conversation about the changing times in cinema. Sudhir Mishra on adapting Israeli TV series Fauda for Indian audiences in Tanao. And director of this week's release Monica Oh My Darling, Vasan Bala talks about the film that changed his life. Let's talk about this week's release, Unchai. Amitabh Bachchan as Amit Srivastav, a best-seller writer. Bamani Rani as Javed Siddiqui, a garment businessman. Om Sharma, who owns a bookshop, and Danny Dinzongpa, who loved the mountains, till now stayed single. We don't know the reason. One day, two days, I have to live with my childhood again. I have to go to Everest again. One day, Danny's character passes away in his sleep after his birthday celebrations with his friends. And the friends take it upon themselves to bury his ashes in the Himalayas as he came from the hills and there he must return. Now, I'm going to live in the years. The journey that the three men and two women undertake make a road trip movie where the travel is more important and explanatory than the destination. Amit Srivastav, extraordinarily played by Mr. Bachchan, is a man who fakes it for the benefit of his public profile and the longevity of his career. No one knows about his wife. Danny in a scene says, Teri kitab aisi nahi hoti jahaan writer kuch kehna chahta hai. Lagta hai ki salesman kuch bech raha hai. Mai agar soj bhi loo, toh Shabina toh mujhe gulgawa ke liye jane bhi deti. Everest ki baat toh dur ho gai. Baman, that is Javid Siddiqui here and his wife played by Neena Gupta. They both are an inseparable couple. Exploring whether a couple should actually be inseparable to look like a happy couple. That's the point. Om, played by Anupam Kher, is at loggerheads with his son, who wants the shop to be given away for a place in a shopping mall. The unending clash between generations. And Sarika has a track which binds all the stories. I don't want to give a spoiler, so sorry. No more detail about her. The film's emotion is quite gripping and relatable, especially if you're over 30. The scenes between the friends are genuinely sweet and fun. Mr. Bachchan looks awesome in all the scenes given to him, inspiring the viewer to value ambition, vanity, self-love at any age. The track of the married couple, Javid Siddiqui and his wife played by Neena Gupta, the characters are true to any middle-aged couple in Delhi or Mumbai or any other city. The Himalayas that have been actually shown in the film are not shot on chroma and just VFX by the DOP Manoj Kumar Khatoi. They are objects of beauty and tranquility as opposed to an inconquerable enemy, thus giving the film a soothing viewing experience. Director Suraj Bajatia, as opposed to his earlier films, actually caters to the changing dynamics of times and relationships by removing the fear of judgment. Men and women are equal. Children need to enjoy their own lives, so let there be space and let them be. Learning to have an idea of what our old age should be like as opposed to what Zamana thinks it should be like. Amit Srivastav says, Nahi baitna mujhe ghar par, pahar chadne hai, nadiya paar karni hai, jungle mein ghoomna hai, is the premise and the point that the film tries to make and very successfully it makes. Very strongly. Nahi baitna hume ghar par, hume pahar chadne hai, nadiya paar karni hai, jungle mein ghoomna hai. The film at 170 minutes though, is a bit longish as compared to what we see today and some emotional scenes uh, which cater to the 90s style of emotional catharsis that is they are there for just the sake of being there they were not very much needed in all it's a film that's enjoyed best on the big screen and family viewing is highly prescribed indians over 40 old age can be as much fun <laughs> नहीं तो साल भर बाद अपनी ऊंचाई तक पहुंच ही जाएंगे हम
Suraj Bajwatiya's family founded Rajshree Films in 1947, the year when we got independence. Since then, they made wholesome family entertainers like Dosti, Pia Ka Ghar, Nadia Ke Paar, Chitchor, Saransh, Babul, and then Suraj Bajwatiya's family blockbusters, Maine Pyaar Kiya, Hum Aapke Hai Kaun, and Viva. Now, their next film, Uchai, with Amitabh Bachchan, Bamani Rani, Anupam Kher, Daniel Nzongpa, Neena Gupta, and Sarika is far from a quintessential drama. It is about finding yourself, leaving the comfort of your home, and taking new challenges. And here it is, finding the Himalayan base camp and reaching that place. Here is a very interesting conversation about their cinema stepping up with the changing times and why female actors in general should also be used in stories for more than their looks and age. High time. <laughs> कैसे शुरू हुआ और आपको ऐसा लगा कि जो सिनेमा हॉल्स में तो बहुत ज़्यादा यूथ ऑडियंस जाती है तो ये कैसे चलेगी वो बताइए एक्चुअली ये 2016 में एक राइटर मेरे पास आए तो जब उन्होंने मुझे ये एक कहानी सुनाई कि सब दोस्त लोग हैं और इस उम्र के 65 वो निस्वार्थ एक क्लाइम की तरफ जाते हैं और वहाँ पहुँच करके अपने अपने मानते कि मैं कितना जिंदा हूँ तो मुझे ये सबसे पहले तो मुझे मालूम नहीं था कि एवरेज बेस कैंप होता क्या है तो फिर मैंने पता किया क्योंकि मैंने हमें मैं तो कभी दिल्ली जयपुर और यहाँ शूट इसके अलावा कहीं शूट ही नहीं किया मैंने वहाँ भी गार्डन्स में किया है और सीधा घर वापस तो फिर ये कहानियों पर कहानी फिर छूटी नहीं मुझसे सास मुझे याद है आपको याद होगा सास इनका शो था दर्द बोला तो सुनाई देगा कितनी खूबसूरत लाइन थी तो वो जिंदगी के मायने आप बहुत पहले से तलाश रही हैं और सोसाइटी को आपने वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट के सीख अब नहीं वो आप तब से दे रही हैं। I don't know anybody around me जिसका सब ठीक हो जो चाहता। People tell me you've led life on your terms on your terms not at all not at all I don't know a single person जो अपने हिसाब से जिया हो जो उसको चाहिए मैंने सिर्फ ये किया। I'll tell you, sir of whatever I do inside ये वो कि जो भगवान ने मुझे दिया है, उसको स्वीकार लिया and made the most of it कि अगर नहीं मिला तो बैठ के रो लूँ या शराब पी लूँ या बुरे रस्ते पे चल चल चली जाऊँ बड़ा आसान होता है। Especially इस तरह के profession में जहाँ आपको तीन तीन साल चार चार साल कुछ नहीं मिलता। Let me talk about myself as an actress। उस वक्त मेकअप इतना जरूरी होता था। कपड़े हमको क्या-क्या पहना देते थे। लाल कलर की पैंट होती थी, येलो कलर का शर्ट होता था। सब करना पड़ता था। You know, you had to have curls and all that and everything। और आप कुछ नहीं कह सकते उनको। You know, मेरा तो ये होता था मुझे मेकअप पसंद नहीं है। तो वो बोलते थे मैम आपने मेकअप भी नहीं किया, मेकअप नहीं कि� कुछ नहीं करके वापस आ जाते हैं। आके बोलते थे सर अब ठीक लग रहा है? हाँ देखिए मैं अब ठीक हुआ ना? और जब मैं वापस आई 18 इयर्स के ब्रेक के बाद मैंने मेरे जो उस वक्त भिजा फ्राई और परजानिया की शूटिंग थी। तो मैंने जाते ही बहुत बड़े एकदम एकदम इसके साथ गई मैं और मैंने कहा I don't like to use makeup I don't know if you can like my freckles good or not तो Sir, I am so happy that for 18 years, for me, it was such a big thing. And to look at it, it is just makeup. But I think it was indicative of how things had changed. We have progressed because 20 years ago, we couldn't think about any film without a love story, without a song. Today, I am so happy I am sitting with my heroines. There is another woman coming on a trip. Did she tell her? रोटी एक्स्ट्रा है आप लोगी नहीं भाई साहब मेरा खाना हो गया माला बहन जी कोई स्टेबल से कुछ ही नहीं चाहिए फिल्म कितने दिनों में शूट हुई कितनी रियल लोकेशंस में शूट हुई है क्या इसमें वीएफएक्स का और क्रोमा का भी यूज़ है आई मीन वर यू रियली एबल टू गो देयर एंड शूट इन दोस लोकेशंस एंड ये 
और कोविड के टाइम में लेके गया हूँ सबको और हम लोग चढ़े हैं तेरह हजार फीट तक हम तो गए हैं शूट कर उसके बियॉन्ड इज नॉट पॉसिबल तेरह हजार फीट तक हम गए हैं चार सौ का सब लोग गए मेरे साथ एंड वी का यूज किया बट मिनिमम किया हम लोगों ने दुनिया की सबसे मुश्किल ट्रैक्स में से एक है यहाँ पर इतनी ठंड पड़ सकती है कि हम कभी भी बर्फ बन सकते तो हर रोज आठ से दस घंटे ट्रैक करने के लिए तैयार हो जाइए बरजातिया फिल्म ब्यूटी इन वे दोनों बातें हैं देखिए अच्छा भी है और थोड़ा yes, yes, वो भी है तो कई सालों तक बरजातिया ने हमें एक ऐसी स्कूलिंग दी जिससे हम अपने पर नहीं खोल पाए औरतें डिवोर्स नहीं मांग पाई इवन इफ देवर इन अ बैड मैरिज रोमांस से एक लड़की निकल नहीं पाई क्योंकि उसको लग रहा था कि नहीं थोड़ा पॉजिटिव तो है लेकिन प्यार बहुत करता है नाउ ये सॉरी मैं थोड़ा थिएटर की हूँ तो मैं जरा एनिमेटेड रहती हूँ और अब जब आप दो में सिनेमा को देखते हैं और रियलिटी को देखते हैं तो आप क्या कनेक्ट पाते हैं एक्चुअली मैम आपने जो बात कही है ये हर पिक्चर में मैं फेस करता हूँ मतलब जैसे विवाह मैंने बनाई तो आई हैव हैड माय फ्रेंड्स कॉल मी अप एंड से कि क्यों बनाते हो ऐसी फिल्म में <laughs> तो मैंने कहा मैंने कहा कि कोई ना कोई तो सीखेगा बोले कोई सीखता नहीं हर बार दिल टूटता है फोन <laughs> आई प्रेम रतन धन पाए कोई इंडस्ट्री का इंसान था या बाहर नहीं इंडस्ट्री की मेरी फ्रेंड थी फीमेल तो तो इन शॉर्ट की ऐसा कोई आके आपके सिंदूर नहीं भरेगा वो क्या आशा जगाते हो आई फेस दिस एवरी टाइम मैम तो प्रेम रतन धन पायो में एक भाई बहन का सीन था मतलब अकॉर्डिंग टू मी अच्छा सीन था तो एक लेडी पी वी आर फिनिक्स से यूँ निकली यंग आपकी उम्र क्यों ऐसे भाट जा रही गुस्से से मेरे को देख लिया तो मैं खड़ा था तो पलट के आई सेम चीज़ पूछती पूछ सब मिस्टर बढ़ जाते हैं क्यों दिखाते हो आप ये क्योंकि क्या होता है हम हम एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं हम इमोशंस देते हैं वहाँ से मिलता नहीं है तो और टूटता है दिल तो जैसे हम हैं हमको रहने दो बट ये ऊंचाई की जब आप बात करें मैम तो आ, ये एक लिबरेशन मेरे लिए भी रहा है क्योंकि मैं हमेशा मैंने समझा यही मेरी दुनिया है मुझे ये दिखाना बट पैंडमिक में मैंने ये देखा कि जो ब्यूटी है जो आपने कहा ब्यूटी वो उसी के पास है जो करेजेस है क्योंकि गुड लुकिंग रिच पुअर सब घर में बैठ के जिसके में आत्मा आत्मशक्ति है वही ब्यूटी था वही करे तो ये कहानी जो है मुझे एक लिबरेशन के तौर पे मिली कि मैंने देखा कि जो करेज जिसके पास है वही खूबसूरत है तो ये करेज की कहानी है इसलिए आज जो ये स्टारका से मेरे सामने नीना जी सारे का मैं बैठे हम लोग वो कहानी कहना चाह रहे हैं जो एकदम लिबरेटिंग है फ्रॉम ऑल दीज तो आई होप तो आप, आप वो लेडी देखेंगी अब अब खुश होंगी वो बहुत खुश होंगी अगर आप एक इतनी यंग उम्र से सब करने लगते हैं तो वहाँ जाकर कोई प्रॉब्लम होती नहीं है यू आर ऑलरेडी ऑन द ट्रैक इट इज नॉट एन इशू विद यू सो फॉर मी इट हैज नेवर बीन अ इशू Going out and doing that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, you've been quite a firebrand woman, <laughs> and we respect you for that, ma'am. Nina ji, you are also firebrand. You have a lot of gaze. You are also firebrand. Subtle. Mahatma Gandhi said, "Na, very, very gently you can change the world. The ways that you have adopted are very gentle, thankfully." वो जो एक वाला है वो नहीं. नहीं There's no chest thumping in your family. <laughs> देखो, मैं अकेली गई अगर uh, holiday पे. हाँ. तो अगर कोई और होता, वो वापस आके बोला, "अरे वाह, मजा है." हाँ. हाँ. मैंने कहा बहुत अच्छा था लेकिन शाम को अकेलापन लगता था तो किसी के साथ जाओ तो बेटर है सो hmm. so, मैं ये नहीं कहती कि yes, go along, yeah, yeah. Women, no. <laughs> so, I, I speak the truth yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. That is also one of the problems of uh, hyper feminism कि uh, ऐसा लगता है कि I'm enough. I can do yeah, everything yeah, on yeah. my own, which is not the fact. Yeah, तुम ही तुम हो तो क्या तुम हो और हम ही हम हैं तो क्या हम हैं. Absolutely. Thank you so much. बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया फिर मनाने के लिए. Thank you. We are headed for a break here. I will tell you a beautiful and a very interesting story about the father-son duo of Hollywood, Michael Douglas and his father Kirk Douglas. Don't go away. Also, Sudhir Mishra, the master filmmaker. After the break. Who serve in the Indian Defence Forces after the Agni Pad scheme? No, Congress will have a we will have a strong and stable majority. They won't succeed here. Sukesh Chandrasekhar has penned a fresh letter against the Aam Aadmi Party. Sukesh in his letter said that he is ready for polygraph test if both Kejriwal and Satinder Jain give their consent for the same. 
He further added that he has even arranged the PR for the Delhi government school story. As soon as the Sukesh's letter came to light, BJP took a dig at Aap's Arvind Kejriwal. BJP spokesperson Shahzad Punawala called out Kejriwal and asked him to take a lie detector test in order to prove his innocence. Shahzad also accused Kejriwal, Satinder Jain and Kailash Gehlot of using the extorted money for Punjab and Goa elections. Today, yet another letter from Sukesh has exposed the true face of the AKVC, Arvind Kejriwal, Vasuli Company and the Vasuli Bhaijan, Satyendra Jain and Kailash Gelo. He must take the live lie detector test and prove to the world whether Sukesh is lying or whether AKVC and the Vasuli agents are lying. Was this money exchanged at Kailash Gelo's farmhouse? Is it true? that crores of rupees that were earned through this medium were spent for Punjab and Goa elections. TNC Minister Akhil Giri is facing severe backlash for raising objectionable remarks on the President during a public rally in Nandigram. In a viral video, Giri was seen mocking the looks of President Draupadi Murmu. He said that I know that people should not be judged on the basis of looks. However, have you seen how our President looks? BJP's Amit Malia slammed the TMC minister Akhil Giri over his remarks. He said Giri has stoked to new lows through this level of discourse. While attacking TMC... Now we move to the beautiful but endangered world of Kashmir. A new series called The Now addresses this state and its problems. Kabir Faruqi returns to the special task group after discovering that the dreaded terrorist who he had killed 18 months back is still alive. Directed by Sudhir Mishra and Sachin Krishna, it is an Indian adaptation of the 2015 Israeli TV series Forda. And its lead actor Manav Vich is doing wonderful work these days. But now we talk to the director Sudhir Mishra. His father was the founder of Lucknow Film Society and his grandfather was the twice chief minister of MP. His films are always layered and delicate like Hazaro Khwai Chayasi, Koya Koya Chand and Chameli and three national awards he's got. So what's new in Tanao? Here he is speaking about the series. خواب تک صرف کشمیر کی آزادی کے آتے شہیدوں کی عبادت کر کے بڑا ہوا مجھے پتا ہے شہید کو جنت عطا ہوتی ہے I saw the trailer of uh, this upcoming 12 part series called Tanao which is based on Kashmir So these are, there have been many films and web series based on the world of Kashmir and there have been many directors who have interpreted Kashmir in their own way, such as Vishal Bhardwaj, Yash Chopra, Amigna Gulzar, uh, Mani Ratnam, of course, with this film, Roja. How is your interpretation of Kashmir different from the interpretation of Kashmir by other directors? First of all, when you arrive at Kashmir, and, and you know you don't arrive at it and look at it as if it's some exotic place. These are human beings, it's normal place like any other it is, of course, there is a conflict. So when you approach it and, uh, you know, you try and adapt Fauda to Tanav to a new thing, you know, you have to reimagine it. Fauda is about two countries. Kashmir is the same. One mm. country. Fauda is about two religions. We tried to make it not about two religions, so it's not Hindu versus Muslim. So we didn't try and make it about, you know, this usual jingoistic cliches, you know, but we are clear on this side we are on either also I mean it's not as if we are not but you know I mean it's a, a human so if you follow the rules of storytelling there is a dharma of storytelling mm. I don't try and be different from anyone I don't know how I am different right mm. I am different because I am different I am mm. not Mari Ratnam I am not Vishal I am not you know I am Sri Mishra I, I have another background I, I come from another view of life so mm. you approach everything from the dharma of storytelling, which right. takes you towards all characters, towards an understanding of every point of view. In the morning, I was watching Khoya Khoya Chand again. And the way I see women in your uh, films, uh, I will come to the women in Tanao, uh, taking a cue from the women in your first file, the other films that you've made. In Khoya Khoya Chan, there was a scene where the writer Zafar says that Devdas kind of storytelling ab nahi chalegi. The woman has to say that uh, you hate your father because you see 
your father in yourself and the woman can't be the age old chandramukhi anymore and he has she has to be more liberated similarly when it comes to tanav i see the women in your uh, in the trailer facing those men head on you know just taking charge of their lives uh, talk to me about the women in tanav and how do you see women in all of the stories that you make well the trick to understanding women is to see them inside yourself no they are as capable of loyalty or betrayal or ambition or everything as you are because of the strong women i have known in my life or my household or whatever so i mean even in tanav you know uh, all the women sort of represent uh, uh, their own uh, selves as much as they represent the men and they stand up to uh, they have a certain dignity and and the original father gives you an opportunity to that uh a lot of people have commented on the women in in, in my films you know and and, and they are strong and uh, you know they're, they're, i don't know if they are strong they are individuals they have a stake in the piece they 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 are like me so uh i mean i i don't see them as different you know they have okay. in, in their own ambition they have a, sometimes they are wrong mujhe na government ka khauf hai na hi harkat ka to bhai to aapka maqsad bhi hai na अब उस पार से जो सुधीर साहब आई वॉज रीडिंग दिस बुक इट्स कॉल्ड एवरी मैं वॉर बाय कैप्टन रघु रमन एंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग दैट टेररिज्म एंड वॉर इज नो लॉन्गर फॉट ओनली ऑन द बॉर्डर्स और विद द एनिमी दैट इज बियॉन्ड आवर बॉर्डर्स द प्राइस दैट एवरी सिटीजन ऑफ द कंट्री हैज टू पे बिकॉज ऑफ टेररिज्म इज ऑल्सो ह्यूज द अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम दैट एवरी सिटीजन स्पेंड ऑन बींग फ्रिस्ट इन अ मॉल you know or uh, uh, cars being provided late night to women increases the cost structure of companies increases the psychological burden of living lots of things there's the, there are huge sacrifices that a country and yeah, the yeah, citizens yeah. of a country yeah. have to pay because yeah. of world has changed quite drastically any form of extremism you know yeah works against somewhat the cause it is seeking to espouse and that's what tanav is about also you know so you take mm. those people and sometimes you know you work you know even though you think your cause is genuine you go somewhere in which by which you harm so that's what the all the characters not merely the intelligence chaps in 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 tana father realize there is a kind of a self realization in the in the piece so mm. it is not that so called in quotes other side is not mm. homogeneous there is dissent right. and the, there are all sorts of people in kashmir it's not just right. black and white one two and that's that's what you try and delineate it's not that the intelligence people don't have compassion it's right. not as if the other side some people are not conscious of the wrong direction some things are going right. we have tried to un- give you an, a better understanding of the whole thing wo din kare jab ek kadi ke liye apna sab log de 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 Up next we have director Vasan Bala whose film Mart ko dard nahi hota was applauded for being so different from the mainstream films. He talks about that one film that changed his life. He tells my colleague Vishal Chatkara that how this classic directed by Mani Ratnam left a huge impression on his mind. Also Vasan's new film Monica Oh My Darling is streaming on Netflix. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are many films over the years that you keep watching, and then it has an impact at that particular time. But uh, if you have to have to choose one film, then I would probably go for Mani Ratnam's Naikan. Uh, it was made way, way back in 1987, and I clearly remember the first time I had seen it. I was a little kid, and I had seen it on a bootleg VHS. It was a very bad print. <laughs> Naikan traces this meteoric rise and fall of uh, a gangster. Uh, it uh, starts from a little boy in Tamil Nadu witnessing his father's murder uh, by the authorities and who he believes was wrongly charged and murdered. Runs away, lands in Bombay, kind of uh, figures out a way of life where uh, the philosophy is that if the deeds to you know good for four people then it's a good deed. and he grows and lives by this philosophy and uh, 
you know kind of does good for his society but obviously in the larger scheme of things uh bring, bends the system uh, breaks the law kisi ko kaam to karna hi hai maine faisla kar liya hai well bhai try karenge but uh, while doing that becomes this larger than life mythical figure who is above the law and above and a system to himself ye payana police la adichi eduthittu poitaanga avana eppadi avudu om pulla enna senja what impacted me was in 87 in spite of the bad print was when the first time kamala sen is revealed and you know someone calls him and he looks back and for the first time i see him clean shaven and uh, also in those days uh, uh, the hero would be beat up but you know the hero would always be smiling even if he's beat up but here you see he's like in pain and agony and i hadn't seen that kind of makeup uh, happen you know in those days uh, otherwise it would just be you know one red a uh, paint over here and red paint over here and nothing really more than that <laughs> one scene that i can never forget is again is those 10 15 minutes of kamal hasan's introduction uh, he's beat and he's put on the street and you know there is this very curious kid who comes and looks at kamal hasan to see whether he's dead or alive and kamal hasan takes some blood from his face and just sprinkles on the kid and smiles and there was a master class uh, conducted uh, and when mr maninathan was talking about his movies and his craft and i had the opportunity to ask him about this particular scene so he said you know that was all kamal hasan so uh, i mean i'm sure he was being very humble uh, with it vanakkenge enna enna vishaya i had also written letters to him like fan mails and all obviously never got a reply but uh, but if there was no maninathan there is no uh, this uh, search to be a filmmaker in fact i I I went to Chennai I uh tried to read and write Tamil because I I know to speak Tamil but I can't read and write Tamil I tried to learn that stayed there for many months tried to work with him I uh, couldn't do that unfortunately but uh, yeah he's he's the biggest influence that anyone can have Nella adubanat mele pala nadu vodat mele bandadud teedud vanna ayya ho So we've come to the end of this episode. Today while I was coming to the set, I was talking to my old friend and actor Rajesh Khattar. He told me a very interesting story that I must tell you. Kirk Douglas was a famous American actor who died at the age of 103. His son Michael Douglas is also a very popular film star. When the son Michael was nominated at a very prestigious award, the father was put up in a five-star hotel while the son was given a seven-star. The press joked Your son deserves a better hotel. Not fair. So Kirk replied that yes, he does deserve. After all, he is the son of a superstar, and I am the son of a farmer. <laughs> the lust for life, self-respect, and a little play of words here and there never goes wrong, right? See you again. I am Atika Faruqi signing off. In yet another horrifying video which is currently doing the rounds on social media, a pet dog can be seen biting a security guard of a housing society in Uttar Pradesh's Greater Noida. The entire incident has been captured on CCTV. In a video going viral, a man was seen lying under a moving train trying to save himself. at Kalgaon railway station in Bihar's Bhagalpur district according to locals the person was crossing the railway track to catch the train when the incident occurred 12 districts in Tamil Nadu including Chennai and Tiruvallur have declared a rain holiday for schools and colleges due to heavy showers in parts of the state the TN municipal administration said that other parts of the state including Puducherry and its Karaikal area would likely receive rain on three more days five weddings were delayed at the anjaneer temple in chennai's puliyanthopur area due to water logging inside the temple couples who had scheduled their wedding months ago lined up outside the temple braving the extreme weather conditions the people of chennai appealed to the government to take steps to clear the water logged roads and also the water inside the temple premises It's time for news blitz where we take a quick look at all the stories making news from across the world. Voting for the crucial Himachal Pradesh elections began on a slow note after officials conducted a mock poll at all booths to check EVMs. As many as 412 candidates 
are contesting the polls from 68 constituencies. The Election Commission has set up more than 7,000 polling stations. Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Jairam Thakur offered prayers in Monday before casting his vote. Jairam Thakur urged all the voters to cast their vote to further strengthen democracy. Namaste. What does being a Hindu mean to you? What does the word Hindu mean? Are Hindu, Hindutva, Hinduism different? How did this ism come into being Hindu? If we are in Hindustan, why can't we call ourselves Hindu? And how is it that elected representatives are saying that Hindu is a bad word? How is it that there are people standing on stages administering oath that derides being a Hindu? How is it that there are people walking around saying, throw your gods and goddesses, throw your deities, your idols into wells, because it's bad to be a Hindu? Somewhere all around, one gets the sense that there is a narrative to try and bash Hindu, break it down. Let's try and deconstruct today, get the right perspective on this entire anti-Hindu. Where does it emanate from? Joining us this evening, three members who would give us the perspective. I have Swami Vigyanandji. He is the global chairman of the World Hindu Federation. Namaste, Namaste Swamiji. Swadhi Vijaya Jyotiji is there, Hindu scholar. Namaste with us. Thank you for joining us. And Hindul Sen Gupta, author, historian and also a personal friend. Namaste. Thank you very much. Swamiji, thank you very much. You don't come to the television channel on our agreement. If someone has done so much research in this Hindu word, रिसर्च किया होगा, स्टडी किया होगा, उनमें से आप हैं। तो सबसे पहले ये बताइए ये हिंदू पर्शियन शब्द है कि भारतीय शब्द है? देखो क्या? First you have to understand Hindu is a pure Swadeshi भारतीय word coming from the Sanskrit word and there is no doubt any scholar east west everywhere everybody agree कि this word started from Sindhu from Sindhu it has become Hindu problem is that our people don't understand the on any grammar because he is not in many, many people mm. are practicing. If you read the grammar, I will just give you, not Ji. very technical for your audience, you know, how the word sing is made, you know. Mm. The hatu is a hints. Hints. Mm. In Prishodra uh, Dini of Patistam, there is a sutra of Panini, there is a sutra. Again, mm. ki there is a word we pray, you know. Okay. Here in place of sa, ha. ha. In place of ha, sa. The same way in our Sanskrit parampara, Sanskrit grammar methodology process, in place of sa, ha is there. Correct. And in Sanskrit, you go in pra even Prakrit also. Hmm. Prakrit, Jain literature also, in Prakrit also you will find sa in place of sa, ha. ha. In many places, not one, I can give you, but that become technical for your audience, they will hmm. not be able to understand. Again, I will give you another example, Assam is, you know. Hmm. Assam has no influence the Persian, you know. In Assami language, everybody pronounce sa as a ha. ha. You know? So it becomes ahom. Ahom. Ha. And, and not, we go in government of India dictionary, they have all listed the word, you know, how sa in a padadi sa has become ha. So Hindu word is originally a Bharatiya word coming from the Sanskrit and it has developed in Bharat. Therefore, in historical context, they, no one has any complex, you know, of Sivaji, Maharana, it. Pratap, they all have a pride as Hindu, you know. Hmm. If you read Swami Vivekananda, how he has a pride about hmm. Hindu word. This problem when started in the 18th, 19th century, some of the Indian Muslim scholar, Indian Muslim scholar, Indian Muslim scholar, Indian Muslim scholar mostly they wrote Lugat, Lugat called Persian Dictionary, Dictionary. you know, Lugat, Firul Lugat, Gyasul Lugat, huh? and wrote meaning of Hindu word, Kala, Kafir Chor, you know, hmm. that is the meaning. See, when I did my research on this, so I searched all the oldest Persian dictionary. If you see the per old uh, Persian Arabic, Hindu word has a very good meaning. I will give you an example, you know, Muhammad Sahab, hmm. the wife, you know, hmm. uh, Hajat Khadija. Hmm. Hajat Khadija was married before Muhammad Sahab twice. Hmm. One husband named Atik bin Azad. Hmm. Atik bin Azad had one daughter with Khadija. Hmm. The, her name was Hind. Hind. Huh? So, and Hind is beautiful. She, beautiful, beautiful in even Arabic. In Arabic. And she was the wife of Abu Sufyan 
and Abu uh, and she is also mother of uh, Prophet Muawiyah mm. in that tradition. Coming to the Persian tradition, Persian tradition Hindu word is very uh, beautiful. You know, there is a English word. Uh, I am translating you. Black Molan mistress chicks. You know, ladkiyon ka gal par hone wa kala til. Anybody will understand. So it's a beauty you know, spot. Beauty spot. Same me. लड़कियों का दिल चुराना वाला प्रेम यू नो ए पर्सन हु स्टिल द वीमेन हार्ट यू नो ये मीनिंग है ओरिजिनली और बहुत सारे जैसे फरहंगे अमीद पढ़ोगे रिचर्डसन का पर्सियन डिक्शनरी पढ़ोगे भारत के बारे में लिखता है विशिष्ट धर्म यूनिक धर्म ऑफ भारत है ना मखसूसी दरंद है ऐसे बहुत पॉजिटिव है वहां ग्वार पाटा को भी हिंदू लिखता है क्योंकि ग्वार पाटे विच इज अलोवेरा नाउ यू नो इज ऑल्सो हिंदू बिकॉज रिलेटेड टू द ब्यूटी यू नो ब्यूटी तो ऐसे बहुत सारे भारत का सोड इवन सोड ऑफ गुड स्टील इज ऑल्सो नोड हिंदू हिंदू सो ऑल दिस मीनिंग इज देयर बट व्हाट हैपन ड्यूरिंग ब्रिटिश टाइम पर्सियन वाज अनऑफिशियल ऑफिशियल गवर्नमेंट लैंग्वेज यू नो इवन मराठा कोर्ट्स यूज्ड पर्सियन एट दैट टाइम सो व्हेन दिस लुगत वेयर यू नो कंपाइल एंड पब्लिश्ड ऑल आवर पीपल आर रीडिंग द सेम थिंग एंड स्वामी दयानंद सरस्वती गॉट इन्फ्लुएंस someone told him about the meaning of hindu and he first denounced the word hindu mm -hmm. later he realized later in one of the conversation in uh, amritsar one uh, commission asked him swami ji he is asking to swami ji dayanand saraswati hindu dharm kacche dhake ke saman hai you know? mm -hmm. swami is telling na hindu dharm lohe ke saman pakka hai mm -hmm. loha toot jaye to toot jaye ye dharm kabhi tootne mein nahi aata hai then yeah. he is giving example this is how the So, so that's the origin. So you're saying Hindu is Sapta Sindhu, or or Sindhu Nadi, and उसके बाद का जो civilization somewhere that reference. Not only to... just Sapta Sindhu. Again, you understand, yeah. Huh? Yeah. These are all Sapta Hindu. You know, uh, narrative is all built by the same Western people. Sapta Sindhu, Sapta okay. Sindhu. Sindhu in our Sanskrit context, you know, the you know present industry bar is also coming from the Kalas Mansur area, going for north and west. Correct. Right? And Brahmaputra is also known as a Sindhu. Ah, because so it's coming from the east and east, east. Yeah. and ocean in Sanskrit is also known as a Sindhu. Sindhu. So a land which is surrounded by the water. Okay. That is called Hindu. That is, ha, uh, Sindhu or Hindu. Hindu. That is ha, how, from that Sindhu is. because originally is a Sindhu word, Sindhu Stan. Original Sanskrit reference is Sindhu Stan. That become Hindu. A land Hindu surrounded by water, water because you had the Indus or the Sindhu Nadi on one side. You had the Brahmaputra, Brahmaputra or the Luit on the other uh, side, uh, and then you had the ocean oh, oh, on three. the other side. Uh -huh. Jaya Ji. So then, how is it that we don't know all of this? Is that the reason why people are turning around and saying Hindu Persians ka koi dirty word hai? See, Hindu to alag hai, Hinduism alag hai. That's the next step. See, uh, if I come to the point, so you know, I look at a broader side that you know, uh, we have been made in a very you know systematic process and through a agenda which has been you know driven for a very long time to alienate Hindus from the Hindu identity. Hmm. So, like you know, we were discussing earlier, and Swamiji had explained that you know, from Hindu, we became. सनातनी और भारतीय भारतीय एंड नाउ वी बीन आइडेंटिफाइड एज इंडिया इंडियन और इंडेक्स सो ओरिजिनली वॉट आर आइडेंटिटी हैज बीन सो सिस्टमैटिकली यू नो देर इज अ प्रोसेस वी यू नो लाइक यूर डिबेट टूडे वी हैव कम टू डिबेट द वेरी ओरिजिन माई वेरी आइडेंटिटी एज अ हिंदू हाउ एवर यू नो इट इज बिकॉज वी हैव बिन थ्रू अ प्रोसेस ऑफ यू नो इरेजिंग यू नो और लेमेंटिंग और कवरिंग द ओरिजिनल हिस्ट्री एंड इवन द टेक्सट एंड यू नो वट एवर हैज बिन रिटर्न टू स्टडी फॉर द कॉमन पीपल सो पीपल हु हैव द टाइम एंड एनर्जी एंड रिसोर्सेज टू गो वेरी डिटेल्ड इन टू हिस्ट्री एंड ग्रामर एंड एवरी थिंग दे कुड फिगर आउट वेदर दी वर्ड हिंदू वॉज ओरिजिनली यू नो हैड इट्स ओरिजिन इन इन आर ओन भारत इंडिया और वट एवर नाउ यू माइट वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट or it has been imported so even the, you know we know from where this whole debate is coming that means you know we have been referring to even an imported history hmm. or a history which has been systematically replaced has replaced the original history or original study text so the whole ident this uh, complete i would say an agenda and a propaganda to make sure that the whole hindu identity comes into question and because for a very very long time hindus not have not never been retaliating they have never been on the offensive you call them names you call them dirty so you know just because in one dictionary you figured out 
uh, that you know some Persian uh, scholar has mentioned a Hindu word wrong, but the similar Persian people have been using the names of their own children or their family as Hindu. So you've not referred beyond that, and you come on a public platform and you just simply say that a Hindu word is dirty. Hmm. That's so there's a difference between dark and black yeah. to a beauty spot. Yes. So, so how you use the word kala also makes a difference, difference. The, because you're, you, and you're, you're using also it using as a term. So Krishna is Shama. So is Shama dirty because he is dark. No, no, no. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, 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 on the same as uh, you mentioned about this beauty spot, I was discussing with the one profession in Jamia Millia University when I was doing my research on this. You know, hmm. she told me, Swami, you people are goody goody people, and you don't understand the intellectual, you know, war. So yes. how they can attack you? So they are not going to write in your support. Na? These are all not very honest, sincere uh, scholar. Na? They have agenda. These very uh, scholar right. have very agenda. Right. Why so, so I that's the agenda. agenda. Huh? So yeah. we have never debated whether Christian is right or Isai is right, whether Islam or Muslim or Mohammedan. Persian or Mohammedan, nothing. We are always discussing, oh, you people are Brahmins, you are Hindus or you are Sanatanis or you are a Sanghi. Hmm. So the debate has been built in my offensive and I have been put on the defensive. So it has been a very systematic intellectual war that we are fighting hmm. and the whole uh, you know uh, there has been a systematic replacement of reference of text or historical text that people can refer to and prove and that is why the gentleman has been so audacious saying Ki, I will only apologize if you prove me wrong, hmm. as if like he was very sure that there is no references at all available to prove him wrong. No, and he is convinced that He's, he, he's convinced with the interpretation. He's not even yes. challenging the interpretation that a yes. nation that is called Hindustan, how can it be named you know, a Hindustan or, or term today, if the name was a derogatory word? Even so today, you would expect someone like a Sati Jarkioli to even challenge in, that before that making a comment. With that reference, even today, the temples in, you know, if you go beyond uh, Maharashtra, temples today are now, we don't call them mandirs, we call them Devasthanam. Hmm. Devasthan, right? So, Sthan is where, so Hindustan. So in that context, when we refer to this definition of Hindu, which is emerging, originating from Sindhu and Sindhu Ghati Sabhyata or Sindhu civilization, everybody staying in the Indian peninsula is a Hindu. Hmm. So you cannot tell yourself that you are not a Hindu. See, somewhere, somewhere this also came or manifested in we, you know, Savarkar's political definition of Hindu, where he said that anybody or everybody who believes that this dhara is your matrabhumi yeah. and your ancestors were born in this dhara, yeah. I will call you and I will deem you as Hindu. Yes. So, and he was quite liberal in his approach of what Hindu and what you, what you eat, what you drink is not my concern as long as you politically believe that this is Hindu. Demographic. Now, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, but Hindol, how is this now becoming the object of everybody's fascination? I think we should. Ah, Everybody is wanting to dismantle it somewhere or the other, globally yeah. or <coughs> it, it, likewise in India. Yeah. No, there is a global context to this. You see, number one, any culture, and this is not widely understood or appreciated in India, but I think it is time that it should be widely appreciated. Any culture can only stand and defend itself it ha if it has one cultural confidence. No doubt that's important. Hmm. Number two, it must have the material conditions to back up that cultural confidence, right? What do I mean by that? I mean that, you know, Swami Vivekananda was exceptional. From a colonial country, he went to the West, he had that, con uh, you know, that confidence. He could speak to the West, not only on equal terms, but superseding them. But Swami Vivekananda was not a normal, ordinary human being. There's no doubt about that. There was certainly divinity in the man, right? Not everybody has that context or not everybody has that uh, you know cultural confidence now this cultural confidence comes whether you look at islam or christianity or any other faith they have been backed by very serious economic power mm -hmm. we'll come to the military power later but economic power certainly right now all of this has become debatable because india is a rising power you see as long as we were yeah. poor you could say any 